This is my geometry course. Today we're going to take test number one. Now, I gave you a practice test for homework. If you did not complete that practice test, do not take this exam. Uh, we also did a practice test in the previous class, so you should have two practice tests completed. One we did together and one for homework. Uh, if you don't complete those practice exams, then it's pretty much a guarantee that you're going to fail this test. And if you fail this test, that means all the work that I put into it uh, was for nothing. Again, the whole purpose of tests is to demonstrate that you are fluent in the math. You have to demonstrate that you can read and write the math and understand the language. If you can't pass a test like this, then you can't prove that you've really achieved that objective. I want you to write your name right now on your paper because if you don't write your name, you're going to lose a point. And write the date also. If you don't write the date, then you're going to lose a point. So please write your name and the date right now on your paper. And write the course title, which is Geometry. If you don't do that stuff, then you're going to be in some big trouble in the academic system. Uh, the test is going to be uh, 25 problems, and each problem is worth 4 points for a total of 100 points. I also want to mention that if you're doing a problem that requires some sort of an equation, and you set up the equation, and most of your work is correct, but you get the wrong answer, you'll still get partial credit. So be aware of that. Also, when it comes to proofs, uh, you may not know how to do a proof. You may, you may not be sure how to complete the proof, but if you just get something on the page, just write the steps, write the given information. And many times, I don't know how to do a proof, but if I just start putting things on the page, it helps me to see what the next step is going to be. So just be aware of that. Even if you put the steps in the wrong order, you'll still get credit for putting something on the page. So uh, be aware that you can get partial credit. So that said, let's take screenshots of the test. Here's screenshot number one. And here's screenshot number two. And number three. And number four, number five, number six, and number seven. Now, you might wonder, well, how, how long should it take to, to complete the test? What, is there a time limit? Well, to be honest, I don't really care how long it takes you to finish the test, as long as you do it in one sitting. Um, it might take you an hour, it might take you two hours, it might take five hours, but uh, you should try to get it done, obviously, as quickly as possible, because in, in school, they're going to give you some sort of a time limit. My objective is just to make sure that you know the material, so that's, you know, that's my uh, objective. I don't really care if it takes you an hour or five hours, as long as you know the material, then that I've I've accomplished my goal. Uh, but just be aware, in school, they're not going to give you five hours to complete a test. So you should be, you should get used to the fact that you're probably only going to be given maybe an hour and a half, uh, maybe two hours at the most. So you want to try to complete it in that amount of time. But uh, if you need to take a break, if you have trouble concentrating, because um, sometimes I have trouble concentrating when I'm taking a test, I know what that's like. If you want to take maybe a, a five minute break, that's fine. Uh, one important thing I want to mention is that you shouldn't have anything in front of you. No, no notes, no computer, no help from anyone, no, no textbooks. I want you to do this on your own. It's, uh, you need to demonstrate that you can do this without any help. And don't look at previous videos. Don't look at any of the previous material. You need to treat this as if it's an exam uh, that you're taking uh, in school. Again, this is a college prep uh, school. So uh, you need to do this without any help from anybody. So that said, go ahead and uh, take the test. And uh, when you're done, I'm going to show you how to score the test. 
and grade the test. And obviously I'm going to give you the answers because you can't do that unless you have the answers. But don't look at the answers until you've completed the test. Again, that, that would be obviously cheating. You need to demonstrate that you can do this on your own. And so pause the video and go ahead and turn off your computer, turn off your phone. And uh, you can write the time code of the video so you can come back to this exact point. Um, and when you're done, start the video at this point. And uh, again, we'll score your test. So go ahead and take the test. And when you come back, I'll show you how to score it. All right, we're back. So I'm going to show you the answers for the test. Again, do not look at these unless you've taken the test. So this is a screenshot number one of the answers. And screenshot number two. And screenshot number three. Now I'm going to give you some uh, some guidelines on how to score the test. And if you don't know what that means, scoring the test, that just means you're going to put a number on your test, and then we're going to interpret the number. Um, I understand that some countries they don't use this grading system, but that's just the grading system that uh, I'm used to. But that's how we do it in the United States. So, like I said, each problem is worth four points for a total of 100 points. Uh, if a problem has four parts, then each part is worth one point. It doesn't matter if one part seems more difficult than the other part. Uh, each part uh, should be assigned points equally. That's just the way I'm going to do it. If a problem has two parts, then each part is worth two points. And obviously, if a problem has one part, it's worth four points. Because each, each problem is worth four points. Um, now... Like I said, if a problem ha requires algebraic steps and most of your work is correct, but you got the answer wrong, you can still give yourself half credit. Now, if your work is incorrect, but the answer is right, well, that means that there's a problem. That means that uh, you may have actually just written the answer down without actually doing the work. In that case, uh, you would give yourself zero points. Now, there's a lot of problems on this test that don't require any work. I'm just talking about the, the problems that, that uh, require multiple steps. But the, the general idea is if you if you can still receive partial credit if most of your work is, is correct. When it comes to the proofs, I want you to assign uh, credit equally to all the steps of the proof. So, for example, if there are five steps to a proof, each step would be worth four-fifths of a point. Now, I know that that is going to make things a little difficult, but uh, just try your best. For example, if there are 11 parts to a proof, then each part would be worth 4 elevenths. If there are 3 parts to a proof, then each part would be worth 4 thirds. Again, I know that that makes things a little difficult with the fractions. If you don't want to use all those fractions, then just uh, try your best to uh, assign points based on what you uh, think you understood in the proof. If you understood about half of the proof, then give yourself half credit. Uh, so. That's the, the basic idea. And again, if you did not write your name, subtract one point. If you didn't write the date, subtract one point. If you didn't write the course title, subtract one point. And that's basically how to uh, score your test. So now I want to go to uh, the grading. If you scored 90 to 100, then that uh, in the United States, you would be given typically a grade of A, which means excellent. 80 to 89 is a B. That means a uh, good job. If you uh, scored 70 to 79, that means you're it's adequate. Means it's okay. If if you got a 70 to 100, that basically means you have nothing to worry about. All right. But if you scored any lower than a 70, then that means that there's a problem. That means you're not really demonstrating that you know enough. Now, if you didn't score high enough, then you shouldn't get depressed. A lot of students, if they if they score below a 70, they get kind of depressed. There's nothing to get depressed about. Uh, all that means is that you didn't do what you needed to do to prepare for the exam. You need to go back and, and spend uh, more energy and time 
to prepare for the exam. Now, there are some students that have problems uh, with uh, things like dyslexia and so on and so forth. If that's an issue, then, you know, it, it may be a different story. You're going to have to uh, learn how to deal with that. But uh, most of the time, the reason that students don't, uh, don't pass the exam is because they just didn't take it seriously. They didn't spend enough time and energy actually preparing for the exam. So go ahead and uh, score your test and give yourself a grade. And uh, that's about it. This tells you how to interpret your, uh, your score. Um, now you might ask, if I, if I didn't pass the exam, what, what do I do at this point? Well, you can keep going through the course, but you're going to have to do much better on the second exam, obviously, than you did on the first exam. You can still pass this course. You can still demonstrate that you know the material. But now you know that you have to start getting more serious about, the, about, about this or else you're really not going to demonstrate that you know the material. So that is test number one. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next class where we start to go over the uh, uh, part two of this course. There's actually six parts of this course. Uh, so we're going to start part two of this course uh, in the next class. So if you pass the exam, that's very good. Good job. And I'll see you in the next class.